and gentlemen, in the next five minutes we'll be closing the casket. Family and friends, I want to welcome you this afternoon for the graduation service of our Uncle Prakash Hari Prasad. The Word of God says in Psalms 41, 46, uh, 1, the Word of God says, God is my refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. For those of you that have hymn sheets, we're going to sing our first hymn for today, and that will be 10,000 reasons. Okay, over to our worship team. <coughs> Psalm 62 says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him, my rock and my fortress. Amen. Let us seek the face of God at this time.
Isaiah 66 verses 13. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. At this point in time, uh, we've got a song item by Vanessa Mohan. Just want to welcome her, Vanessa Mohan. dedicate this song to their dad whom they love so very much. Sure. 
Thank you, Vanessa, for that wonderful song this afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to welcome Nicole Singh, who will read the opportunity. Nicole Singh. Prakash Hari Prasad, known to known to all as Shorty Obabi of 17 Violet Lane, Crossmore, sadly passed away on the 6th of April at the age of 66 years old. He was born on the 21st of February, 1957, son of the late Mr. and Mrs. Jagadur Hari Prasad, and he was raised in Afratizana Township. He is survived by his wife, Lena and his four children, Ashina, Isha, Amy, and Mayesh. And he has three son-in-laws, Kalan, Mayur, and Vinod. He also leaves behind his most beloved grandchildren, Michael Ray, Jamie, Jesse, and Gordon. Jordan. He leaves behind his two siblings and a host of niece, nieces and nephews and friends. All who know Prakash would agree that he had the ability to take charge whenever assistance was needed. His selfless nature was a trait that all of us appreciate so much. And his passing will no doubt leave a massive void in our lives. He was a talented cook who was ever ready to use his expertise to entertain with his loving and wholesome meals whenever you walked through his door. We can safely say that he is rejoicing in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will be sadly missed by all. Thank you, Nicole. Those are the true words that we remember, Uncle Prakash. Okay, we're just going to hand over to our praise and worship uh, team, which will sing us a second hymn for the song. That's going to be, How Great Is Our God.
book of revelations reading from verses 14 chapter 14 verses 13 it says blessed are the dead who die in the lord from now on yes says the spirit they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them at this time i just want to call uh, uh, michael ray and jamie hari prasad for the tributes that's the grandchildren of uncle prakash also known as Jamie the boy tonight I am the eldest granddaughter your favorite show mr bean and if i said no he would shout at me because this was something we used to do together my favorite memory with nana is when he used to take the train and do his surprise visits and come and see me he used to buy me lots of snacks and we used to spend the whole afternoon together we used to have such an amazing time playing games and just being with each other these are just some of the precious memories of nana that i will have with me forever Love me, Anna. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael, also known as Michael the Monkey to Anna. The most memorable memories were when Anna took place when I was mainly in high school. From grade eight to twelve, uh, Anna and I used to. used to wait outside my school every day to pick me up and walk me to school and walk me to uh, Batchy's house every day um he also bought me my very first school blazer and I wore it from the day he bought it it's of the last day of my trip and I was grateful enough to gift it to someone else um I used to always cook my favorite food and never used to stay with him and i stayed with him for several uh, days during high school and no matter what he used to always wait there and everyone in school knew him and he used to uh, just yeah all of that and he used to always make sure that i was fine and that we were all okay and he always had a smile on his face whenever we saw him and always giving us food and ice cream and sweets and just joking around <laughs> uh another very special memory to all of us is the times when we used to come and visit him and we used to always go around and walk in his garden and he used to make sure that he used to pick at least four or five cherries just for us from his cherry tree <laughs> and he always made sure he had food cooked and made sure that we ate before we left and Another very special memory to all of us was when Jordan, Jesse, Jamie and I used to always help him to make his famous sachi which always came out the best from everyone else's. <laughs> These are just a few of the many memories we shall all cherish forever. In life we loved you dearly, in death we loved you so. In our hearts you hold a place that no one could ever fill. Your wings were ready. but our hearts were not we will always love you nana is an amazing and caring person that i always love forever i'm going to miss him very much but i know he is in a better place and rejoicing in heaven i'll always love and miss you nana we love you and miss you nana so much thank you to the grandchildren
this time we'll just call upon Timela Singh and Atish Rampasad can get ready as well. Timela Singh. Good afternoon, family and friends. I can truly say that it is an honor to share with you some of our most treasured memories that we as the Singh family share and have with Shwari Nana. For those of you who don't know me, I am Roshan's daughter and Shwari Nana shares a very special bond with my dad and his sisters. More so my dad, as my dad and Shwari Nana formed an unbreakable bond. Many say that they were as thick as thieves. We lived just up the road from here and every morning, Shwari Nana would come out and step out here in his yard. And my dad would be outside and they must wave to each other. That's how they used to start their day. It's safe to say that when my grandfather passed away, Shwari Nana stepped up and stepped in as a father and a grandfather figure to the Singh family. I will never forget the time that I removed my wisdom teeth and Shwari Nana decided to come see me and he brought a packet of muruku with him for me. Um, my sister Nicole was, I would say, one of his favorites. Uh, she was never short of a snack and she didn't even have to ask for any of her favorites. Every function of ours or events in our lives always included Shwari Nana because we could never do it without him. To Shwari Nas again and Zach, they remember that Shwari Nana definitely did not like vegetable food. If he ever came to our house and ate with us, which was all the time, he would never eat in a paper plate because he would tell you he's not a dog. <laughs> he was always with us whether he was unwell or not. He was never, it was never a grandfather or father relationship, but much more of a best friend relationship. Zach, who's known as Fishy to Shari Nana, did ask me to say that he will miss Shari Nana and he wants Shari Nana back. Shwari Nana always took a walk across the road to Auntie Roshila's house and that was known as his coffee house. He would take his friends there and ask them to pay for their cup of coffee while he got his for free. <laughs> Shwari Nana had a calling name for everyone. Lynette was Japanese. Zach was fishy as I said. Raisa was small girl and Nadia was Muslim girl and Nicole was Nicole the boy. The Singh family has some amazing memories with Shari Nana, our random Sunday road trips, um, our trips to Drakensburg, our day trips were just the spontaneous ones were the best and we will love and miss him so much. Um, uh, I did receive uh, a few words that I will relay on behalf of Angar Rogers who is Shari Nana's neighbor and he says, my dear friend Prakash, fondly known as Shorty and Nana by my grandkids, I am deeply saddened that you are no longer here and I could not be here to bid, bid you farewell. You are not just a neighbor, but regarded as family. We will cherish all our good times together. I am at peace in knowing that you are no longer in pain. Rest well, my friend Shorty. We love and miss you dearly. My prayers are with your family during this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara Singh. We're going to call upon Atish at this point in time. Atish Ramprasad. You know, the saddest part is, well, I'd say the hardest part is to say, saying goodbye to somebody you love and who you care for a lot. And with Mosa, you know, it was always that up and down I had with him. It was a fun and then the angry come out. It was a fun and then the angry. So I had my time with Mosa. He was a very, very good cook, right? He was, uh, putting it bluntly, he was a great cook. So great that we had a function once and I told Mosa, you know what, I got a guy for a contact for rice. And if you want, you know, we can go see him and see what he says. So Mosa comes along with me. So he goes, speaks to the guy in Seven. The guy says, you see, uh, Uncle, I got rice, but it's fake. So 
from Lamosa is like, what do you mean fake crash? He said, no, but the Aunt Caroline, but the auntie doesn't have the glasses. So Lamosa looks at the bag and he says, okay, it's fine, we'll just cook it, we'll tell the people, not she's got contacts, it's fine. And trusting Mosa, the, the food that he cooked that day was one of his best priyanis. And up to today, I mean, he, that's the thing that he, we learn from our uncles. It's either you have, you know, your group of uncles, you've got the fighting uncle, you've got the drinking uncle. My uncle taught me how to cook, and he taught me how to cook well. And Mosa, I know you're lying down here, but you're looking up, looking down at us from heaven, you know, smiling down at us, knowing that you are there, you are happy. And, you know, I wish you all the best. And to the family as well, you know, daddy is in a better place. So, you guys take care, stay well, keep safe as well. Thank you, Atish. The Word of God says in uh, Revelation 17, 18, it says, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Over to our praise and worship theme, which will lead us into our third hymn for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
this time we just want to uh, ask Ashika Devraj to come and give us uh, a reading from the Bible. Okay. My reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. For we know that if our earthly house of his tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that in his tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, be clothed upon, and the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has made us for the same thing of God, who also has given unto us the earnest of his spirit. I'm going to say a few words about my mama. As a believer, I know my mama is resting well in his eternal home with our Lord and Savior. He's been there for me through tough times and a lot of really fun times. I can say this to everyone. My mama has left an amazing legacy behind. Moments spent with him will be very dear memories held in my heart. He was the soul and heart of the Hari Prasad family. Thank you, Ashika Devraj. Our second reading will be Raisa Ali. Just a message from Nadia. The day she, Chari Mama got sick, she climbed up a ladder to go through the window to open the door for the rest of them. And the first thing she witnessed was the Bible on Chari Mama's chest. So keeping that in mind, I would like to read a chapter. I would like to read uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 to 13. And Jesus said, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Whether it is because of the deluding influence of the false teachers or the persecution of the, or the fear of death, the zeal of many false professors will diminish. Their love towards God and towards the church will grow cold. True Christians, even those whose faith is weak, will persevere to the end. Theirs is the true love, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and it cannot fail. True love cannot become cold because it is sustained by Christ, who is able to keep us from falling. With this being said, I will always remember Shari Mama as one who always had love in his heart that never ran cold. Thank you, Raisa Ali. The Word of God says in Isaiah 40, verses 6 and 8, it says, All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail, because the breath, of the, the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of God stands forever. Dear ones, I wanted to say to you today that what we see here in front of us is the uh, mortal remains of Uncle Prakash. Today, he's smiling down from heaven because I know that he accepted Jesus as his personal savior. I had the opportunity over a year and a half ago to lead him to Jesus. He accepted Jesus as his personal savior. And I know that today he rejoices in heaven. The aches and pains that he went through when he was on the face of the earth, he goes through no more. So he's rejoicing. And to the family, I want to encourage you this afternoon and say to you, don't despair, don't lose hope. There is hope in Jesus. Focus on Jesus and Jesus will come through for you. Be encouraged by the word of God this afternoon. Yeah, praise and worship will lead us into another song this time.
of 1st Corinthians reading from uh, verses, uh, chapter 15, verses 57, 55 and 57. And it says, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer as we worship God. This morning. Hallelujah. <laughs>
your praises is up to you, Father. All praise is due to you. I just want to call upon my mom at this point in time to pray for the word of God at this time. Thank you. Let us bow our heads. Thank you, Father. We bless you this hour. We praise you. We thank you for everything, Lord. Thus far, blessing. And I pray, God, even as your servant is going to minister a precious word, Father, I pray, God, that you're going to touch hearts. You're going to strengthen everybody, Father. So I commit the word into your hands, God's precious word. And I believe and trust that some hearts will be touched in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Amen. This afternoon, in our presence, I'm so glad to announce uh, our senior pastor from Trinity Mission Center is here, and I'm just going to hand over to him at this point in time as he comes, Pastor Sean. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to greet you this afternoon in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. This afternoon, I'm here to bring God's word to you this afternoon. And uh, we see here. Uh, There are many feelings that we have when somebody is departed from the earth. And uh, there are some difficult moments. There are some discouragements. There is a lot of things that goes through our minds. But I want you to understand this afternoon that it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Everyone is a visitor on the planet Earth. We are not here to stay forever. There is a day that there will be calling in our life. There will be a knock on the door. And when God knocks the door, nobody can stop that. It's time to go. I want to take you in a few passages of scripture this afternoon. And I want you to see what life is all about why we are here on planet earth we are here for a purpose we need to fulfill this purpose before we leave the earth now each and every one of us here we're here to fulfill a purpose to discover our purpose in life many of us go through challenging times many of us go through dark times Many of us go through trialing times in our lives. Those are the challenges that we have to face in our journey to reach our destination. And today we find somebody who is here that we need to bid farewell to. We need to bid farewell to a father, a brother, a husband, a grandfather. We have to bid farewell today because this is his day that the, God, the Lord has called him home. But when you see there is a journey, we have a journey and we have a destination to meet. We are on this earth here, we have to face those challenges before we reach our destination. Many of us go through heartaches and pains. Many of us go through sicknesses and various other challenges that we are faced with in life, in our journey. But there will come a day that when the Lord calls us home and we finished our work on earth and we are called home. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 it says, To everything there is a season, 
and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. And many of us here know that the time that you were born. We know the time that we were born. We celebrate our birthdays. And we know, okay, this is the day that we have born, been born. But one will not know the death day. Nobody will know the death day when they are going to be gone. Clear sticks tell us there, there is a season and a time to every purpose. There is a season in everyone's life. There is not something that which will last forever. It's a period of time. It's a season. And we go through that phase. And when your season is over, we need to go. Like in the harvest. When the harvest is past, the harvest is over. The season is over. There is no more harvest. So there is a season in our lives. And there is a purpose that we need to discover in our journey and how we're going to make it to our destination. Time to be born and a time to die. Job 14.10 tells us, But man dieth and wasteth the way. Yes, man giveth up the ghost. But where is he? Job asks a question here. And he say, if man die, shall he live again? What kind of an assurity that we have that we could live again? And the only assurity that we would have, the gospel of Jesus Christ, when Jesus said, though you were dead, yet shall you live. We have the assurity that If a man dies, shall he live again? This is the question. The answer to this question is in John 11, 25, 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth and also believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now you may ask me a question this afternoon. You may say, well, what are you talking about? How is it possible that you will never die when in front of us we see a casket here? Yeah? Somebody is laid in this casket. But I want to tell you this afternoon that he's not dead. He's asleep. Because in the sweet by and by we shall meet him again. He will rise again. He said the death in Christ shall rise. And I want you to know that there is life after death. Because when you die, this is your, just your body that will perish and wither away. But your spirit will live for eternity. When God created man, he created him in his image. He created him out of the dust. So that is why we say dust to dust, earth to earth, when we do a cometer. Because what was brought out of the earth will go back to the earth. So he formed, he formed man out of the earth. But the only thing, that when he formed man out of the earth, the man that he formed had no life. And God had breath into his nostrils and man became a living being. Now what belongs to the earth shall go back to the earth. What belongs to God will go back to God. When God breathed his breath of life into man, that breath of life must go back to God. And how it needs to go back to God? This is a question. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh to the Father but through me. Jesus has given us the assurance that that breath that was breathed into your nostrils to make you and I a living being this afternoon, that same breath of life shall return back to God. But that breath of life has to follow a journey. It needs to go through the journey and that's why the Bible speaks and it tells us there is two destinations and there is two definite places. You can either choose which you were destined to go and which way you want to go. He speaks about the narrow road. He speaks about the broad road. But I'm here to tell you that what belongs to God must go back to God. It needs to find his way and get back to God. And on that way, there is many challenges like we lived on the face of the earth. We faced many, many, many challenges. Nobody can say, tell me that we lived a rosy life. No matter if you're a Christian, you're a child of God or whatever it is, you still go through trials and tribulations. You go through persecutions in your life. You go through dark times. You go through discouragement. You go through all sorts of things. Those are the challenges that we need to face. And the only time when God calls us, that is the time that you labor out of all these problems and that you are going to rest to be to rest with God. And Job asked this question, if man dies, shall he live again? For God so loved his world, the world, that he gave his only son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but he have eternal life. This is what he's speaking about, the eternal life. And that is what I'm talking about today, is that eternal life after death. You won't have eternal life on planet Earth. Your, your time on Earth is your time to face challenges. Is our time to face challenges. This is what we are going through in this current season or this current time that we are living in. It's, a God, it's not a good thing to look about anymore. This world is not the same like it used to be. It's difficult, it's hard, it's dark, it's bleak. Everything seems so miserable. Some of us don't want to wake up the next day. You don't want to see the next day. Like we longed for in those days that we said, okay, we can wake up the next day and we can know that, you know what, we feel, or oh, we, we want to do something. But today it's so miserable that you don't even want to get up the next day. Because of the whole world is in a crisis, in a situation, in the dark time, the turmoil, the things that are going on. People don't want to live anymore. This is how the world is. But when all these things are happening, I want you to understand that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming back. His imminent return is so soon. Now is our time to be ready. We need to be ready to meet with the Lord. Get prepared. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is what we need to do now. There is no time to run around and complain and do all sorts of things about this church or that church or I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian or what. There is no time to debate. There is no time to debate about religion. There is time to spend time in prayer with God. It's time to make right with God because it is not yet our time. The knock on our door is not yet. But thank God he is gone. He is gone to be with the Lord. He don't have to face the challenges. He don't have to have any more aches and pains. He don't have to face any more the crisis of this world than you and I this morning, this afternoon. We are here left behind. We are seated here. But we're going to face a miserable time in our life. But that is why we need to get connected with God in order for us to get there. If you tell me that you believe in the rapture and you know that the, the, the Lord is coming back, then you better get ready. We better get ready. We better, get, we better start now praying and trusting God so that we can be caught up in the rapture. We don't face the wrath of, this, uh, uh, of the judgment on the face of the earth. We don't want to face the tribulation time. 
I myself, I don't want to face tribulation time. I want to go be caught up with the rapture. I don't want to face on the seven years on the face of the earth. We need to go. We need to be prepared. And yes, he answered it and he said, you shall have eternal life. For he loved the world that he gave you his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Where is that eternal life? The eternal life is here. When you go up, not here. This body, our body will perish. It will go back to dust. But the eternal life, your spirit never die. If you want to know something, your spirit never die. If you say, okay, there are many people who will say, you know what? If I die, I'll rest in peace. Sorry, you got the wrong end of the stick. That is not something that you need to think of. That when you will rest in peace when you die, that is the time that you open your eyes. When you die here, yeah, when you close your eyes here, yeah, you open your eyes somewhere else. You have to face the challenges and go. If you got the Lord on your side, fine. Your paths will be open for you. Never die. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 to 8. And this is what the Apostle Paul says. For I am now ready to be offered, and my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is, a, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is what the Apostle Paul is speaking. And he said, I fought a good fight. We are here on planet Earth to fight a good fight. This dead here, he fought a good fight. He fought a good fight by the challenges that he faced through his sickness, through the difficult time that he went through, through every situation, every discouragement, whatever it was, he had fought that good fight and he kept that faith. And he can say, my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I want you to know there is a race that one needs to run. And there is a race that we need to run. And only time that when you finish the race, you'll be able to be awarded with a prize. We have the Lord's race. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it tells us, Let us run this race with patience, for he is the author and finisher of our faith, looking unto Jesus. There is a race. I finished my course. I kept the faith, henceforth there is treasures laid up for me in heaven. In order to reach that, we need to be in the race. We need to be in the race and we need to finish our race. I'll tell you something, if your race is not over, There is no departure. If the race is not over, each and every one of us are here in a race. That is why today you will find, even, as, even if you are in a bus and the bus rolled over 10 times, you wonder why you are still alive. But others you'll find, they are gone because your race is not over yet. When your race is not over, God will not take you. For our dad here, his race was over. His season was finished. He have done the work. He have kept the faith. And he have fought a good fight throughout his life. And he came to a point that when he ended his race, his departure was there. And he had to depart from the earth.
Although we go through the, all these challenges in our life, although we go through all the hardships in our life, that is part of life. That is part of life that each and every one of us needs to face. We are many people that are always complaining. I don't blame the people for complaining because the situation is so bleak. They are confused. We don't know which side to turn to. Every side that we are turning and every side that we are look to, there is no good news anymore. There is only bad news. And every time we want to see the news, we find bad news, bad news. And this confuses many of them. And many of us are confused living on this planet Earth. But he is not late. He's early. He's gone. He's gone to be with the Lord. We are late. We are still here to face the challenges, the crisis, and the situation that we are facing. It's not going to get easy anymore, beloved. It's not going to get easy. It's going to get hard. Famine is going to hit just now. And I feel so sorry because I just trust and I pray to God that God, the Lord must come and he must take his people away because we don't want to face this crisis of famine and so much of things that is going to happen. People is going to have a hardship at this time. And let me tell you something. It's going to be so difficult that we won't even have food to eat. The challenges are going to be hard. When you look at it and you see the one world government is coming and is taking over. One world currency is coming. People are going to be slaves to the government. And we need to be careful. We need to be careful how, what, what we do. That is why our daily prayer is God sustain me, keep me strong. Till the day that you come. We got no other alternative. And let me tell you something. Our only hope today is in Christ. We cannot put our hope, we cannot put our trust, we cannot put our faith into man. For the Bible says, cursed is the man who puts his faith and trust into a man. We put our faith, we put our trust into man. Today they let us down. They let us down in a situation where you and I are today are battling ourselves because there is no aid for us anymore. Society has lost. Governments has lost. Everything to provide for the citizens in South Africa as well. You'll find globally, it's going around. And I'm telling you, beloved, things are going to get difficult. But yet, the Lord says, though you go through the challenges, Though you face many trials, though you go through dark times, no matter whatever the hardship that you are going through, then no matter whatever we are still going through, a loving God, He still speaks to us. And He tells us in John 14, 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. Though you may be going through these times, but yet He comes out again and He tells, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you shall be also. A loving God. This is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying this afternoon to each and every one of us. Don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed of whatever you see and hear now. The Lord says, with it all that you are going through and you're persevering and you're going through, let not your hearts be troubled. 
Because I am saying to you, this is what the Lord is saying. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And I want you to know something. A mansion, if you see a mansion, it is something extraordinary. Something beyond our comprehension. And I want you to know that he says in my father's house, there are mansions prepared for you. But I don't want you to go in that mansion. Because I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you shall be also. The Lord Jesus doesn't want you to depart and go into the mansion because he's preparing something even better than what we think. And he's going to go prepare that place. And let me tell you something. If a house is not done, if a house is standing with foundation, Will anybody go and live in that place? Hello? You can't go and live in a home when there is a foundation only. Or when the side walls are put on. Would anybody go there and say, well, I'm building my house. I got the side walls built and now I want to go and stay and live in that house. You can't. You will wait till the house is complete. The house must be complete right to the rooftop. And only when the house is completed, then you will decide to go and move in to go and stay. Am I right? You will go and stay. So similarly, Jesus is saying that I am preparing a, a place for you. Each and every one of us is preparing a place for us. So when the place is ready, and your name is on that place or that house. And when it is ready, he's going to take your way home. Nobody is going to hold you. Nobody is going to keep us back. When your house is ready, you must go. So he's preparing that place. Each and every one of us. Our homes are not ready yet. That is why we are still here. His home is ready. And he's called him to his house. He's gone back to his house. I go to prepare this place for you. That where I will be. You shall be also. Mansions. And home. What a beautiful thing it will be. That when the Lord comes and takes everybody to their homes. And we don't have to face the crisis of this world anymore. Now I would say this afternoon in conclusion that our dear dad yeah, is going to be in a better place where there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness. He don't have to wake up and face the next day. He is always there with the Lord Jesus Christ in his arms. And if anyone, or if he is there, and if anyone asks him whether you want to go back down, I am sure he's going to say, I will never want to come down again. Never want to come down again. I want to stay there because it's better. You know, sometime in closing, when somebody is gone out to some other place, overseas or wherever it is and you find the place it is so nice everything is okay you're living a good a peaceful and a happy life and when you say okay why don't you come down and live back in south africa they will say no i don't want to get into this place anymore you wouldn't want to come back because why you're living a peaceful and a happy life there so same, likewise, it is there in heaven. It's a better place. And anybody who gets there will never want to come out of there. Never want to come back down. So today is our day that we could rejoice and say, our dad is in a better place. He's rejoicing there with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to be happy and going to say, 
He's graduated from here and he's gone up there to celebrate with the angels and with God. So this afternoon I'm saying to you, we bid farewell for him to be in a better place in heaven. Let's bow our hearts this morning, this afternoon. I would like to just pray over you this morning and this afternoon. Just bow your hearts with me. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, our Father, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you because we know with you all things are possible. Dear God, I want to thank you even for our dear dad. We know that he is in a better place where there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartaches, Lord. And we know that he's rejoicing with you and the angels above. And he's watching down and he's saying he's in a peaceful place. But this afternoon, Lord, I pray for every head that is bowed in your presence here. I ask you, dear Lord, that you will reach out your hands and touch them. You know, the, you know the heart, you know the needs, you know the requirements, Lord. You know the challenges that they face, Lord. You know the heartaches, the hardship, the trials, the tribulations, and the dark times that they are going through. But with it all, Lord, you said in your word, nothing is too difficult for me to handle. This morning, this afternoon, I ask you, reach out your hands and touch them, Lord. And I pray that you grant them peace upon their lives, O oh God. Help them. Help them, Lord, this afternoon to be strong, courageous, and bold. We just thank you, Father, as you cover them with your blood. And Father, this afternoon, even as we would further continue, Lord, we pray that your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Sean, for that very encouraging word this afternoon. Okay. Uh, friends, uh, we're going to open the casket for a few moments. Uh, the body should leave in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen uh, the face, you're welcome to view it now. Okay.
Okay, we just want to call the immediate family to spend some time before the casket leaves for this afternoon. Okay, so the immediate family, you're most welcome to spend some time at this point in time. We have come this afternoon to the end of this funeral procession at home. We're going to be on our way in a few minutes to the crematorium in Clare State. So I just want to call upon uh, Anesh Hari Prasad to close in prayer this afternoon for us. Anesh Hari Prasad. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we call upon your precious name, Father. Thank you, Lord, on this resurrection Sunday, Lord, Father, we can celebrate the graduation of our uncle. And we know, Lord, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing, Father, because you have chosen the best for them, Lord, Father. And I pray for the family, Lord, that's going to be a gap, Lord, Father. But you're going to give them strength through your Holy Spirit, Lord, Father. You're going to comfort them, Father. You're going to shield them, Father, with wings, oh, Lord, Father. And they're never going to be lost, Father, because you're going to guide them, Lord, Father. And as we further continue, Lord, as we're going to be on our way to the crematorium, Lord, Father. We pray, Lord, for your blessings. We pray for your guidance, Father. We pray for your Holy Spirit and your angels to be with us, Father. For we ask in your wonderful and precious name. Amen. Thank you, Anish. Okay, for those of you all that are going to come near us to Clare Estate, uh, you're welcome. We'll leave in a few minutes. Thank you.
if the Paul Bearers could just make their way up to the casket, we'll appreciate it.
And I know for sure today, and I can say this very boldly from this podium, that I know for sure that my Father is in heaven and he is in rejoicing. Okay? And I know someday when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the Bible says very clearly that the dead in Christ shall be the first to arise. So I want to tell you, I want to invite you to get to know this Jesus, okay? He loves you, He cares for you, He shed His precious blood. Especially it's so significant today uh, in the Christian calendar. It's a Resurrection Sunday, okay? And I want to tell you, Jesus is much alive. He is not dead, but He is alive. The Word of God also says us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, it says, For we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. Like you see this casket that lies in front of us here. There's nothing that, that our Uncle Prakash is taking. He's not taking his house. He has a car. He cannot take it. He cannot take his bank down. The only thing that he takes is the clothes that he has on him. And each one of us will go through that. Death is inevitable. Death will visit each one of us. Okay? Whether we like it or not. Like Pastor said, it is sermon at the house. That when your race is over and it's time to go and your number is called for your mansion is ready, you will leave. And this is the time where Arthur Prakash, his mandate to his assignment on earth has come to completion. His race that he has run has come to, come to completion. It's over. Like the Apostle Paul says in 1 uh, Timothy verses 4, uh, reading from uh, chapter 4 verse 7 and it says I have fought the good fight I have finished the race and I have kept the faith and truly we can say Dr. Prakash, before we say goodbye to him he has fought the good fight he has finished the race he has kept the faith we want to give God praise, glory and honor we want to thank you on behalf of the Harikasar family for all those that have uh, contributed in any way for those that have supported family in whatever way on behalf of them we want to say you a big thank you okay uh, so thank you very much for coming we just want to give the family the last few minutes before the body goes into the tunnel and also anybody else that has not viewed the body you most welcome to do so now thank you
Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to proceed now. Uh, the discussion is still open for those that have the views, we still have the opportunity before we go. Once the class test is closed, you won't be able to.
Almighty God of his great mercy to receive unto himself the soul of our dear brother Prakash Hari Prasad, here departed. We therefore covered his body to be consumed ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who shall change our earthly body that may be like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. I'm going to call our senior pastor to pray over the family. That's what he's the body. Father, we thank you again that you call us. Yes, Lord. We thank you, dear God, that you will have hands upon your family at this time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That even as Lord who told the parts from the head, yes, Lord, we know He is in your loving hand. Yes, we just thank you for the Lord, and even as we have a precious blood. Jesus Christ, we are proud of you. Thank you, thank you. 